Now this is the pebble or stone that I'm going to use. Now just select one that's quite smooth that's going to be easy to put the mosaic onto. Uh, another bit of advice as well, be very careful where you take your stone from. Uh, some beaches and that prohibit it or other places. Just be respectful from where you get your stones from. So now I've chosen my stone that I'm going to use. Next you have to take your fish sheet and choose the one that you want. Cut a few out if you want to try it. But I've actually going to choose this one because that fits on really nicely. I've chosen this stone because it's relatively flat. You've only got like one curve. So I'll stick this down slowly and that will bend over there and stick down there. But first I've got to mosaic it. So how do I do that? Well you've got two options here. You've got the different design sheets here that you can cut out into random shapes or if you've been doing a project before and you've got loads of leftover bits here like I've got, uh, you can use all these bits up. Very simple and easy to do, just using some PVA glue. Now before you start gluing them on, it's good to cut these uh, scraps here into manageable pieces because if that's too big to go around the stone it's much easier if you work with smaller pieces so they overlap and give you even more of a mosaic look. You don't have to be too precise with these, it doesn't matter at all what they look like. So I've got my pieces cut out, I've got some PVA glue here, I've got a nice flat brush here and all it is is just doing section at a time adding the different pieces. Now you can pick these up with the end of your brush and just lay them on. Press them down as you go. You don't want too much glue, otherwise it'll make them a bit sloppy and it may start them all uh, wrinkling. So at this stage, just go over the top and, and just stick them overlap into each other, just like so. As you can see I finished the top part of the stone and I've actually rested that onto a, a reel of masking tape. Just helps it. I'm going to let that dry and then I can turn it over and do the back of it. Now the front side of the rock is nice and dry, I can turn this over and again I've got this masking tape reel, just helps me steady it and move it around. I can prepare that, I can start adding more mosaics to fill the whole rock. Again just a little bit of glue, and like you did on the front, just keep adding the scraps of paper so you completely cover the rock. Now the stone has completely dried, I can stick my fish on. Now the fish is quite a big one, I'd make life a bit easier if I'd put a smaller one on, but because that's going to slightly buckle as I put it down. So what I'm going to do is stick this down in stages. First I'm going to do the main body, then the tail, and then any of these bits that are stuck up, I'll just snip with some scissors so they actually stick to the stone really well. So first of all, I'm going to stick the body part down. And again, all you need is just a light covering of the glue. It's water-based PVA. That's all this is. You can use whichever glue you want, of course. Now as you can see the first part of the fish is stuck down, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to concentrate on these fins here either side now and just a little bit of glue underneath and a little bit of brute force and they'll stick down nicely. 
So just smooth them out. You can use your finger if you want. Now it will slightly crease because you've got the contour of the stone. It's not flat, obviously. So you will get some little creases. But I find if you push them right down, then it will find its way. So I'm sticking those down first, just going over with a bit of a glue as I go. Don't forget you will be giving these uh, a coat of varnish if you want and that also helps any creases you've got filling. So there you go. I'll let that just dry for a minute and then I'll stick the rest of the tail down. Now you can see that the fish is stuck down here, the fins here are stuck down and because it's moist it kind of stretches slightly so it allows you to kind of push it into position and make it fit the stone. Finally, which is quite easy I think this section, I'm just going to put some glue underneath where the tail fin is going to be. Like that again, not too much, you don't want it to be wrinkling too much. And then just press this down onto the stone and you'll find that wraps around quite easily. A bit more glue underneath there, I think. And just press that down. And the same under the sunlight. Just notice a little bit sticking up there so that can be dealt with as I go along. So all you've got to do now is just put that to one side, let that dry, and then we can start the varnishing. Now that the fish mosaic has completely dried on the stone, I can start giving it a coating of varnish. Now I'm going to varnish the front first. You only need a very, very thin layer of varnish for your first coat and then just gently build it up. What I tend to do when I'm doing a stone like this, I one day I may, I may varnish the top five, six, seven times, as many times as I want really, and then let that dry overnight and then turn the stone over and then varnish on the back. It's entirely up to you how many coats you want to give it. If you're going to put this outside in the garden, then I suggest you use a varnish, which is an outside varnish. This is, uh, this is what I'm using for indoors to go in the conservatoire. As you can see now, the stone has had I think it's about seven coats of the varnish altogether. Now, when it's dry completely, you can turn that over and give the back uh, a number of coats as well. Again, it's just the same procedure, just a thin coat all the way around. Let it dry and then apply another coat.